Once we wrap our heads around what a subsequence is, um, the question then is, can we find, uh, when are we guaranteed to find subsequences that have nice behavior? The lemma that we looked at a minute ago said that any sequence at all in the entire world, right, any sequence of real numbers that we can write down, will have a subsequence that's monotonic. So that's great. That means that no matter how nuts our original sequence is, it'll have a monotonic subsequence in it. We're guaranteed that that exists. What about convergence? Well, we have this result from our last section. Actually, yeah, last section, section 2C. Um, that says that any sequence which is both monotonic and bounded is guaranteed to be convergent. It's a monotone convergence theorem. So given that every sequence at all has a monotonic subsequence, if it also, if that monotonic subsequence is also a bounded subsequence, then the monotone convergence theorem will tell us that it is therefore a convergent subsequence. And that's awesome, right? That is the content of the theorem that we're about to look at, which is really one of the centerpieces of the first half of real analysis. So why do we need that boundedness hypothesis? Why doesn't the monotonic subsequence that that lemma gives us always converge? So here's an example of a sequence that has some kind of weird behavior going on in it, right? Here's the first term. Here's the second term. It's a little smaller. The third term is bigger. Fourth term is smaller again. The fifth term is still bigger. Sixth term small. Seventh term big. And so it's kind of alternating back and forth. Um, so now suppose that we focus in on, there's really two interesting subsequences here uh, that we could look at. Uh, one interesting subsequence is the subsequence of the terms that are kind of down here. Whoops. There we go. So the subsequence of terms that's down here looks like it's, well, I think it actually is monotonically decreasing. Uh, and it looks like the limit of it, actually, it turns out when you look at the numbers, it's not actually decreasing. Here's the second term, the fourth term, the sixth term, the eighth term, the tenth term. So they're not actually decreasing. They're increasing a little bit. Um, but what does it particularly also look like these terms are doing? Looks like those terms are converging. Right? Looks like the, the values of the even index terms in the sequence are sort of settling down, uh, slightly increasing a little bit, but it looks like they're approaching the number one. Um, it turns out that's going to be the case right, for this sequence. So this is a monotonic subsequence of this sequence, which converges to one. But there's another monotonic subsequence in this original sequence. It's not quite as friendly. This subsequence is monotonically increasing. The first term is 1.5. The third term, 5.25, the second term of my subsequence. Third term of my subsequence. Fourth term of my subsequence. Fifth term, sixth term, seventh term. And that's a monotonic subsequence, but it's not a convergent subsequence, because those terms are increasing without bound. We would say that that subsequence diverges to infinity, uh, or sometimes in, in the other section of real analysis, I learned that they call that properly divergent. Uh, so I'll call it today, properly divergent. Uh, it means that, that the, the terms of this subsequence increase without bound. Um, so we do need the boundedness hypothesis in order to guarantee that the subsequence that I choose, which happens to be monotonic, will also be convergent. Because if we don't have the boundedness hypothesis, we can get something like this that happens, right? Where when I go to the lemma and ask for a monotonic subsequence, maybe it gives me this one, which turns out to converge. But maybe the lemma gives me that one, still monotonic, but it's not bounded, and so we can't say that it converges. In order to guard against the possibility that that lemma will give me a monotonic but not bounded sequence, we need to be able to guarantee that that subsequence that I get, which is monotonic, is also going to necessarily be a bounded sequence. We need to force it so that there's no way for that <coughs> lemma to give me an unbounded monotonic sequence. And the way to do that is, one way to do that, is to force the entire sequence to be bounded. If I force the entire sequence to be bounded, then in particular, all of its subsequences will also be bounded. And therefore, any monotonic subsequence that I get out of that will also be a bounded subsequence. And monotonic plus bounded equals convergent. That's the monotone convergence theorem. And so we put all those ingredients together, and we have just talked our way through the proof <laughs> of the bolzano weierstrass theorem. Uh, one of the most important theorems is also one of the most fun to say, uh, bolzano weierstrass uh, which says that any sequence, any parent sequence which is bounded, will have a convergent subsequence. Uh, 
So it's, it's really one of these things that's, that's surprising because it finds this really, really nice behavior, convergence, probably the nicest behavior we can have for a sequence. It finds convergence behavior within a parent sequence where all we know about it is just that it's bounded. And the only ingredients that we needed in the proof were this lemma that give us the monotonic subsequence and then the boundedness of the whole sequence guarantees the boundedness of that subsequence and therefore applying the monotone convergence theorem that subsequence also converges.